We are doing faith, fear, and favor. Faith, fear, and favor. Amen. We have covered a huge part of the ministry tonight. God is good. But still, we have to eat the scriptures because if we don't do, then tomorrow I'll have to preach for three hours. Amen. And I want to preach for two and a half. God is good. <laughs> so, Nimona, you're 30 minutes. Amen. So, we are doing faith, fear, and favor. Today, we shall do faith. Um, something interesting about faith. Then tomorrow, we shall look at fear and overcoming fear. Then on Sunday, we shall do favor based on how far we go with fear. Amen. Amen. God is good. Numbers 23, verse 2. We shall do verse 2, verse 3, verse 4. Um, then uh, maybe verse 16 and 20. We won't do the whole chapter. Sour. Then we'll do Numbers 22 thereafter. Then we shall do the prayer. Then we shall get into the word. Today the word I'm teaching is very simple. Unless it becomes complex. Amen. Yes. Now, uh, Numbers 23, we're there. Verse 2. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Balak and Balaam. Balak was a king. Balaam was a witch. Sawa. So let me introduce your story. Balaam was a witch. Balak was a king. Good. Verse 3. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by the burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a high place. Underline the word, to a high, to a high place. Underline that. Now, of course, we know he's doing that to see. Verse 4. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. There is something Balaam understood there. If it was my Bible, I'd underline something there and say understanding. God is good. If that was my Bible. But since it's not my Bible, don't underline and write the same words. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So he says what? Upon every altar, and God met him. And the Lord, let's read verse 5 for the sake of context. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Turn unto Balak, and this is what you shall speak. Then we jump into verse 16 of the same chapter. The Lord met Balaam and put words in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak and say this. Now, verse 17. And he came to him. Behold, he stood by his burnt offering. And the prince of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him that which the Lord had spoken. And he took up his parable at, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, you son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. This is a scripture we like, isn't it? This is the context now. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should what? He should repent or change his mind. Has he said and shall he not do? Or has he not spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. That is Balaam telling Balak, Balaam telling Balak. I wonder why they met those two fellows with those names. Amen. So and Balaam. Now Balak, Balaam, Sazingino said are wrong. So Balaam says, What God has blessed, God is not a man that he can lie. And there's something the Lord has spoken of the house of Israel. And even I cannot reverse it. Now, um, I want us to read chapter 22. Just turn your Bible 22 very quickly. We shall do 22. Because 22 is when Balak and Balaam meet for the first time. Now, we jump to verse 21. Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went up to the kings or the rulers of Moab. We are together. Now, we read verse uh, 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary, as an adversary against him. Now, he was riding upon his donkey and his two servants were with him. Then we jump to verse 28. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto you, that you have smitten me this three times? And Balaam said unto the donkey, Because you have mocked me. Now this is a strange man. The donkey spoke and he responded to the donkey. Mimi, sana sana. Minge shuka hiyo, punda. And the running I would run. I don't think I'd answer at the donkey. I don't think that would work. God is good. 
But Joseph Balaam had seen strange things in his life. He was surprised. Where imagine a donkey talking back. God is good. If a donkey laughs, it just looks scary. Now when it talks. Balaam said, uh, you have mocked me and I will, and I will there, I will mock me. I will there was a sword in my hand. I would kill you. And the donkey said unto Balaam, uh, I'm, I'm not I, your donkey, upon which you have ridden ever since I was with you unto this day. This donkey said deep things. Ilipena friendship speech. We have come from far with you. This is what you want to do to me. Can you imagine this animal say these things silently? The time Aluya is taking the chicken to go and slaughter. Nile mayaini mekupea. This is the thanks I get. <laughs> and he says this. Was I ever want to do so unto you? And he said no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and he saw drawn his hand and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. So the donkey spoke. Uh, to Balaam, he never knew why the donkey is stopping. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And I underline that. God is good. God is good. Today we are talking about faith and sight. Faith and sight. That is what you're talking about when you talk about faith today. Give me the scripture we pray. Let us pray. This is God's word for me. It is alive and true and sharper than any two-edged sword. I believe this word is changing my life today. Holy Spirit, give me the ability to receive my Rema word today and the alertness to perceive the revelation of your word for me and the strength to be a doer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when Balaam, the story of Balaam and Balak is interesting because after Balaam says the Lord can't curse what he has blessed. The Lord can't curse what he has blessed. I think they persist like three times or four times until chapter 24. They are still going at it. Balaam is still saying let's try one more time. Are we together? But every time Balaam is doing this, he is changing view. Balaam is going to one place, going to another place, going to another place to change his view. So the question we ask ourselves tonight is what was Balaam seeing that Balak could not see? Hallelujah. Now, let us go back to chapter 23. Please. Let's go to verse 8. It says, How shall I cast whom the Lord has not cast? How shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Who does he behold? He's seeing the Lord. Everywhere he goes, he sees the Lord. And he's saying, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of, of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like this. Are you hearing this? He says this, that there's something that I see. There's a way that I see them. And the way that I see them, they are not people who are cast. They are not people who are cast. Give me NLT, the same verse 9. Good. I see them from the clifftops. I watch them from the hills. I see a people who live by themselves, set apart from other nations. From the fellowship, you know, being set apart is being sanctified, it's being holy. So they have been set apart by other nations. They have been set apart. So why is Balak seeing people to curse? And Balaam is seeing a different thing. And Balaam changes the view. Balaam offers a sacrifice, stands, looks, a different thing. Sees the same thing. These guys are blessed. I cannot curse. Question number two is, what did the donkey see that Balak, that Balaam could not see initially? He had the revelation to hear the voice of the donkey, but never had the eyes to see the angel. Priorities in life. Hallelujah. He can hear the donkey, but cannot see what is holding the donkey. So question number two is, what, what was the donkey seeing that Balaam could not see? Write this down as the first point today. If 
a donkey can see in the spirit, so should I. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. If a donkey can see, why can't you see in the spirit? Hallelujah. A donkey can see. God is good. The beast of burden can see in the spirit. How much more you? So question number one. Why can't I see in the spirit, Lord? And a donkey can see. The donkey never prayed to see. But the donkey still saw. In fact, it saw and spoke. It actually saw and prophesied. It could testify. Hallelujah. It even gave its life history. It could be a friendship speech. We've come from far, Balaam. I can't do these things to you. I'm trying to imagine the voice of the donkey. God is good. I'm thinking of the donkey in, in Madagascar. So I'm thinking of how it sounds. <laughs> and so, the question is, and this is the paradox of faith. It's a paradox of faith. Hallelujah. The paradox of faith is, we know for a fact, Romans 10, 17, Give me the Romans 10, 17. That faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Every time we talk about faith, never forget Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by no other way. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. Remember when Paul is writing this, he's writing with a reference to people who have not read the Bible as we have. Please note. Paul is writing to people who have not read the Bible. They don't have the book of Corinthians. How on a revelation? He is talking to Romans who have not read the Bible. So he's telling the Romans that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. He's giving an Old Testament account of how faith came by hearing and hearing the word of God. So faith is tied to words. See, we know that. Good. But there's a question here. The Bible says the righteous shall walk by faith and not by sight. It's a paradox of faith. Number one, write that down. That the righteous shall walk by faith and not by, by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The righteous walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning the righteous walk by what they have heard. Isn't it? But not by what they see. Please write down in your own words what I've said. That the righteous will walk by what they have heard, not what they have seen. We are together. The first thing we're looking at faith is that. Number two is this. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Matthew 4.4. 4. So number one is that if you are the righteous, then you shall not walk by what you see. You will walk by Romans 10.17. By hearing the word of God. Number two, Jesus added something else. He said, there is no way you will live. You'll only live by the word that proceed from the mouth of the Father. We are together. We are seeing words again, right? God is good. Number three, write this down. That the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2.4 The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. How many of you require faith to breathe out? Do you know actually it takes faith to breathe in and out? But you have done it for so long, it's normal. That is how miracles should be. Hallelujah. That is how they should be. They should be so natural and so normal that you don't have to think about them. So we understand these three things. That number one, as the righteous, we walk by faith what we hear, Romans 10, 17, not by what we see. Number two, we will not live by only eating food. We shall eat, live by what? Hearing the word of God. Number three, being just, we shall live by faith. We won't live by works, by law. We live by faith. And number four is this. By faith, very important. The earth was formed. By faith, the earth was framed, in fact. Give me Hebrews 11.3. By Hebrania. It says, though we understand, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
Now I want to ask you a fundamental, a fundamental question. Can you frame what you don't see? 38 marks. Can you frame what you don't see? By through faith you understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. How does God bring something from the unseen realm into the seen realm? By faith, they understand that the worlds were framed. Can you frame what you don't see? Did God call out nothing? Or did God know when he said, let the earth bring forth the fruit to bring forth? Eh? Hallelujah. Do you know which animal, the Bible says, let the sea bring forth creatures. Do you know which, there's an animal called the seahorse. You know the seahorse? The seahorse is the only creature so far discovered that the male is the one that gets pregnant. I have no response. <laughs> of all the hallelujahs I've had in my life. I didn't think that qualified as an hallelujah moment. I don't think so. I'm asking this, that God in his wisdom, in all things you know about those of you who follow a lot of science, that there's no random thing. In fact, I like to scientists who are believers. They say what? That science proves that God exists. Science is evidence of the existence of God. The gene code, everything. Now I'm asking a, a very good question. That did God call that which was unseen? He had never seen it. Or had God seen it and spoke words to bring it to come? When God says, let light shine, has God, is God meeting light for the first time? Hallelujah. God is good. paradox. Amen. Give me Psalms 33 6. Psalms 33 6. It says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. God spoke a word and the heavens were made. But did God make a heaven he had not seen? God is good. Because we need to understand that Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And the righteous shall not walk by, by sight, they'll walk by faith. But the question is, can a righteous person walk blind? Should a righteous person see? Remember the donkey. Hallelujah. Remember the donkey. Amen. For the sake of this uh, class, we'll call the donkey Nebuchadnezzar. Sounds like a good name for a donkey. God is good. Now, let us look at Romans 4.17. Let's open your Bibles. We'll play with the word a bit. He said it's a simple thing tonight. That's why I think. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. I have made you a father of many nations. Before him whom, whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead, and call the things which be not as though they were. The things which be not as though they were. If you are calling things that were not as though they were, you must have seen how they should be. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring something into perspective tonight. Because we are going to pray about this today, tomorrow, and the day that follows. He told Abraham, remember Genesis 15. He tells Abraham, Abraham tells God, listen, I have no hair. I have no child. The only person I'll give my wealth to is Eliezer of Damascus. And God tells him there's nothing like that. I'm going to give you children. I have made you a father of nations. So God is seeing Abraham and God is seeing the nations. Abraham is seeing Eliezer. So when God is speaking those words, by faith, Abraham hears those words. Hallelujah. But Abraham needs to see himself as a father of nations. We are together. Because faith is powerful in its own right. Hearing and having the knowledge of scripture is good. But the Lord needs to open your eyes in the spirit. But you can see things that are in the spirit. God is good. Remember in Numbers 13, you won't read now. When they come out of Egypt, do they protest? 
Walk with me please. Siku ya prison break. Do they protest? There is no protesting. They gather gold, gather everything. They obey, stay in their houses. They sprinkle blood on the top, on the side posts. If you they, they eat the lamb of the Passover, they carry gold and silver and they walk out singing wonderful songs. They get to the Red Sea. They complain a bit. The Red Sea is opened, they cross. All through, even though they are there. Hallelujah. Look at what they are not doubting. Hallelujah. They are not doubting God in the desert. They are questioning provision. Numbers 11, there was a mumbling among them. They were mumbling over something. Give us meat, give us food. It wasn't daily. We have got pockets when they complained. But in the desert, every morning they never woke up and said, the manna is lit. No one said their clothes were torn. No one said they were unwell. When they're bitten by snakes, God healed them. In the desert, they never doubted God who said, I will take you from Egypt. They never doubted. To a land flowing with milk and honey. Did they doubt? When they had. Faith came, they had. Then Moses told them, go and supervise the land. When they went to spy the land, the moment they saw, they doubted. See the difference? They had received a word that they shall be given a land flowing with milk and honey. In fact, they testify and say, truly that land has milk and honey, has got vineyards you've never seen before. But, why is it that the Lord had to ensure they see? Because in seeing, the Lord wanted to know that in their hearts, in their spirit, can they see what God has seen? Because the word you hear from God must align with your spiritual eyes. Your spiritual eyes must align with the word you hear. If your, the word you hear doesn't align with the spiritual eyes, you'll always have to produce doubt. Always. What makes a human being doubt a miracle is not, the, is not anything else. It is what a human being sees. It is what we see. That's why the Bible says you walk by faith and not by sight. But the sight we walk with is not sight in the physical things. It is sight in the spiritual things. The place they fail and you wonder. The moment they see the promise is when they doubt the goodness of God. I was telling my team last night that there's no part in the Bible only of, I think once or twice where the Lord literally told someone what he had called them for. He never told Moses what he called him for. He never told anyone. It is at a point they were with God, then God turned and said, by the way, lay hands on Joshua. By the way, pair Elisha double portion. By the way, but when the Lord told Jeremiah, I have called you, sanctified you prophet. Jeremiah goes, I'm just a child. Because the moment God reveals his desire for your life, your spiritual eyes must be able to see it and trust him to deliver. The problem with believers is we look at our own capacity to deliver. Hallelujah. This morning we were having a discussion with my wife before we left the house. And I was telling you, we were talking and I was saying that, listen, if the journey from, we'll read that in a few minutes, but the journey from Egypt to Canaan was 11 days. Would they have raised an army in 11 days to bring down Jericho? Would they have raised an army? They would not have raised an army. But still God was taking them there anyway. Why? It's because God was banking on his own power, his own ability. God wanted them to see what he was giving to them. God wanted them to see in the spirit the land flowing with milk and honey. Caleb comes and tells Joshua, listen Joshua, I want the hill country. It is a good place. Caleb sees in the spirit his inheritance. When they're in Canaan, after everyone has gotten his property, Caleb comes to Joshua last and tells Joshua, to everyone has their portion. Now it's time for my promise. And Caleb never tells Joshua, give me an army to go claim my land. Caleb tells Joshua, 
I will go with my sons. I am as strong as I am now the way I was 40 years ago. Why does Caleb do that? Caleb wasn't in a hurry telling Joshua, you've given Judah theirs. You've given Nani theirs. Caleb didn't go there. Caleb was confident. But God promised me, God will deliver. Hallelujah. And Caleb, for 40 years, Caleb was ruminating on the vision of the hill country. And the hill country that Caleb gets is the, is the place where giants lived. Caleb is the one who got the land where giants live. The Bible says all other people lost their land. Caleb's children remained there. How did they bring down giants? Because Caleb saw what the Lord had spoken. Write this down, please. It is not what you see. It is the realm that you see. It is not what you see. It is the realm that you see. Are you together? The realm that you see determines the outcome of the faith you possess. Your belief is anchored by the realms you see. Hallelujah. If you don't see it, you are doing what we call wishful thinking. You are praying, hoping something happens. Yet you ought to pray knowing something will happen. God is good. Can we open the gospel of John? I read John last night. Let's open the gospel of John. Are we John? John 3. The story of this great man they call Nicodemus. The Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus. Underline he was a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler of the Jews. The Bible mentions another ruler of the Jews in the name of Jairus. Jairo. Yes. That is the other ruler of the Jews in the book of Matthew. So Jairus is a ruler of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews. Now, remember that the Pharisees are what we call today theologians. The Pharisees had more word than they had revelation. They had more word than they had the presence of God. They had more word than they had the Holy Spirit. The Pharisees, remember, they were in groups. We are the Pharisees, we are the Sadducees, and we are the eh? uh -huh. Mr. Scribes. He's actually right. Eh? Hey, scribes. Welcome, Jane. Welcome. Give us some scribes, but welcome. <laughs> eh? Who? Be? Be? Oliver and Okay, you make class. Let's just call us. John the Baptist was a what? Huh? Alex and Okai Numa. Alex, I may say, my John the Baptist was a zealot. You know, that is almost a scandal. A biblical scandal. Calling John the Baptist a zealot. Who just zealots in Omaoma? How does John the Baptist? <laughs> Okay. Let me talk to those who are either eh? What's it? Eh? Hey, Mike. Shh. Don't embarrass your wife. I watch an English those who have sana sana. Those who, who uh, maybe are still Anglicans or are Anglicans, or those who are Catholics or are still Catholics. What is the creed called? It's what called the word creed. Uh, what's the name? There? 
I seen the I seen creed. There were the I scenes. John the Baptist was among the I scenes. Their work was to hide the scrolls and preserve them. That's why they lived in the forest. We are together. Remember, the father of John the Baptist is who? Is who? And Zachariah was who? He was who? All guy in the coin in my class. Watch on the drum. I'm safe here. Zechariah was what? Where does he meet the angel? Where? I'm waiting for you. He was what? A high priest. That's what I was He was a high priest because he was behind the curtain. He encounters the angel behind the curtain. Hallelujah. Now imagine this image. Imagine this image that Zechariah stays alive until the time of the death of Jesus. That Zechariah is the one who's dragging Jesus the way Caiaphas did. Look at that image. It wasn't him. Olive, Olive, no, it was him. Kumbe karibu na maji, haimanishi kukunywa maji. Haimanishi kukunywa maji. Jesus. I'm scandalized. Ah, yeah. Okay, let us focus. Okay, it's wrong and Good. So, the Pharisees were the cream of the cream. They were the most educated among all those groups. Now, these groups were weird. I don't want to teach about this a lot, but they were weird. They fought among themselves. The Sadducees didn't like the Pharisees because the Pharisees were things they had than them. The Pharisees thought the Sadducees were fake, trying to pretend to be like them. Are we together? So when Paul says, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees, he says, listen, he says, aside on the feet of Gamaliel, he's saying basically, my teacher was one of the greatest teachers. So the rule of the Pharisees basically is a theologian who's higher in theology than the other theologians. Are we seeing this? So Nicodemus, the Bible says, let, let, let us know that it wasn't someone without biblical reference or theological reference. It is someone who taught other theologians about the Bible or the Old Covenant at that. So when Paul says, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees, it means that in the Sanhedrin, Paul had a seat. We are together. In fact, Paul says that he voted for the death of, for the stoning of Stephen, meaning that Paul sat in the Sanhedrin. Story for another day. God is good. Now, so the Bible says he was a ruler of the Jews. A Pharisee named Nicodemus, the first one we meet. The next one is tied in the story of Jairus. Jairus is the other ruler of the, of the Pharisees, or the ruler of the Jews that we find. Now, the same came to Jesus by night. By night. This is the difference. Nicodemus came by night. Jairus came when the sun was shining. Because when you are desperate, you don't care who sees you. Hallelujah. God is good. When you are tired of a situation in your life, you never care who sees you. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, if someone entered here in the middle of prayers, would think you've lost your mind. No. But they don't understand when you are desperate. You don't care about who's watching you. That's why Jairus is at a place he's at the end. He's thinking, my daughter is sick, almost dying. It doesn't matter. The Bible says he comes and bows before Jesus and says, listen, my daughter is unwell. I told my team last night that wisdom is the ability to discern when there is a greater anointing near you, when there's a greater gift near you. Because only a greater gift can lift you. Only a greater anointing can lift you. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the understanding that right now, where I am right now, if I just carry water, it is okay. Are we together? 
That's why John the Baptist says, the one that is coming, I don't even have the authority to tie his shoelaces. John the Baptist is recognizing that there is someone greater than me that is coming. Are we together? Part of the doors of being lifted are, are those ones. Hallelujah. You've heard of the story of the guy who was at a lift and insulted someone at the lift only to find that that was the interviewer. So now that after chai, um, I'm at the wrong meeting. This is the wrong meeting. Up and one house spare parts. God is good. So Nicodemus, listen to this. Nicodemus says in verse 2, he comes just and says by night and says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. So he says, Rabbi, you are a teacher. In context, just like me. But he says, a teacher who comes from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with them. So Nicodemus is noticing something. That there's a greater anointing here. There's a teacher higher than him. So he begins by saying, understand something. I know. I am a teacher. I teach the word. I am a Pharisee. I teach. I am a ruler. But the things you do with this word, I don't do. You must be from God himself. What that does, it opens up Jesus for a release. He says what? God is good. Listen to Nicodemus. The signs you do. Nicodemus is saying, I have been a Pharisee for many years. What one will be ringing Noah, the covenant, but no one does what you do. So he doesn't come to you and say, Rabbi, you are a teacher just like me. No. You are a teacher come from God. He separates. Next verse. Very beautiful verse. Listen. Hallelujah. What does it say? Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Say if a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If a man is not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now he's telling Nicodemus something Nicodemus has not studied in his books. Now listen to this very important thing. He doesn't, the context of verse 3 is tied to the context of verse 2. And verse 2, Nicodemus is saying that I'm not questioning your teaching. I just want to know how do you do what you do. And Jesus is saying, this is how I do the things that I do. If you are not born again, because only if you are born again will you be like me. And if you are like me, then you will see the kingdom. He doesn't say enter. He says see. There's a difference. In the next verse, he says enter. But now he says see. And seeing means that in the kingdom of God, the signs and wonders that Jesus is showing them are normal in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there is no one sick. There is no one in bondage. There is no one in debt. So Jesus is saying, the things that you see me do, this is the kingdom of God, you need to see it. But you can't see it unless you are like me. And the only way you can be like me is if you are born a... Again, Nicodemus the theologian asks him, how can a man be born again? Do I go back to my mother's womb? Because from Genesis all the way to Malachi, there has never been a story of being born again. Nicodemus hakuna facts. Biblical fact. Hakuna maali imeandiku hapa. There is no miracle of the sort. And Jesus says in the next verse, save a man be born of blood and water. Sorry. The spirit and water. Nimeruka. I've gone to the topic here, Kesho. The spirit and water. Then it talks about what? Entering the kingdom of God. The first one is the manifestation of the kingdom. The second one is accessing the kingdom. The second one is the resurrection. The second one is the life after here. The first one is the life to experience on earth. Tell me you are with me. Please. Are you together? So, I need to understand that in the kingdom of God, Seeing wonders is normal. And that is why Jesus manifests to us, repent, for the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has come. Why? It's because in the kingdom of God, miracles are normal. In the kingdom of God, no one has a back problem. In the kingdom of God, no one is broke. No one is sick. No one is tired. And he says, you will not see this in your lifetime unless you are born again. Never underestimate the word being born again. It's a very powerful word. Hallelujah. No, you know the problem of being cool. Hallelujah. Problem of being cool. 
You know, I did youth ministry for a long time. Preached in schools. And I used to go to schools and we used to have a problem. Because if we go to a school, we'd be given a small place. Then you'd find that there was another group. Hallelujah. Walikuwa nita DJ. Kina kubamba, kina nani wanakuja bana. Niko chiki chuku, chiki chiku chuku. Students will be there. So it's a three-day weekend challenge. Tuko Friday students are all there. Hey, where we have been placed. We have like ten students. Friday. You will hear people making comments. That to preach to the youth, you must make the gospel fun. You must make the gospel fun. So when I dance, when I do V to Apple, skits and mimes. Hallelujah. And I had one principle. I think because I'd come from a rapid world. Amen. I was in that world for long. And I never wanted anything that is touching that world. Sikutaka. Simon, I understand you. God is good. Yes. I never wanted anything that was familiar. I never wanted. We went to a school and we were playing a gospel song and the beats. Zilikuwa beats here. Your love is wicked. Remember that song? Yes. So what I remember gospel and people are singing. And I'm like, what is this? is sacrilege. I want to go burn them with fire. God is good. It bothered me. So we would preach. And I used to say something. But the gospel in its own right is enough. If Jesus cannot attract a young person, then why do you think a song will? I'm very honest. I'm very honest. If Christ cannot attract in his own fullness, why do I think that something from the enemy will attract? I am selling a counterfeit product. I am lying to them about a God who mixes. And that's not Jesus. So when you translate this person from there into the Holy Ghost, there's a problem. And so we used to go, and on the second night, you can think of the second night, to Mengia manifestations now. We are unleashing the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is moving. By night, Saturday night, when the other place should be in full DJ mode, they have come where we are. By Sunday, when we are doing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, everyone is where we are. Huko kulifunga. DJ in a mixer, kapepa. We remain with the Holy Ghost. And I used to tell my team those days, I can even remember I used to go with them to school. So I used to tell them, we are not going to compromise. Christ must be enough. That's it. Jesus is not boring. Do I look bored? <laughs> David, do I look bored? <laughs> yes. And that was always my argument. I was like, I left this life and I came to this life. Not because that this one is boring. No. And I used to say, we have to take Jesus in the fullness. Now, what is the moral of my point? If you read this story, he says being born again, those days, I say those days, the days of your aunties, when people would stand and say, my name is so and so and I'm born again. Nowadays, we are afraid. If I say I'm born again, Utanita Holy Joe. Jesus entered the back pocket. I shall unleash you on Friday at the worship experience. God is good. Hallelujah. Nimerusha Mawis, isn't you? I am an evangelist also. Amen. Yes. We know we stopped saying it, Kevo. We'd meet our friends and they ask you, so uh, why don't you do this? Uh, you know now, uh, I need to learn my choker. I have a place to go. Where? I don't have a place to go. We have something. There's a story someone told me that someone was telling them somewhere else that when they come for prayers on Friday, like when I say, Mother, there's normally a business meeting. We go to on Friday nights. Business meeting. I said, Nendanga Mao, Maombi. Now we hide the kingdom, but we want to see the kingdom. So I remember those days. People would say boldly, I am born again. When my friends would want me to go join them where I used to join them, and I told them, I'm on antibiotics. I'm on antibiotics. Until one time I just had to say, I gave my life to Christ. I am no longer the man I was. Now I can watch. How often do we testify we are born again? 
nimekuja speed how often we are afraid mike we are too say we are afraid but what will they think of me if i say fridays i go for prayers i remember one of our late members remember sam the late sam sam was mad like that sam went for a job interview and sam told the employer there are days you cannot touch because these days i go for prayers one is wednesday night i go for prayers the other one is friday night all other nights i can work night shift those two don't touch them siku ya interview how to prepare contract do you know what you have done you have told god fight for yourself you have literally put god on the spot us are you okay to work on sundays yeah yeah i'm fine i'm flexible i'm flexible hallelujah see what i'm i'm flexible yes will you join us at the club tonight yeah 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 so you are there and you start talking to yourself even though i'm here i'm the righteous of god in christ jesus i'm the righteous of god jesus this doesn't define me the blood washed everything please ah niko na maombi leo usiku we have prayers i have to go and pray Imeisha. Hallelujah. No, you know, you're there just, you're just binding. Now I bind. But you know, you know when you can't bind when your head begins to move. When I draw, now you are being bound. <laughs> you have stopped binding. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. I realized I could only drink enough Coke. Coke ya kwanza ya pili ya tatu is too much sugar. Umefura tumbo. So I had to come to a place and say, I am born again. End of story. Do we say in the workplace, I'm born again? What are you listening to? Gospel music. You call yourself, yes, I'm born again. You, you are not. What are you listening to? Just music. What music? Ah, just stuff here and there. What are you telling Jesus? I can fight for myself in this territory. Jesus, I'll call you on Friday to fight. Right now, this is my territory to fight for myself. And that is why we find we don't carry the presence of God even in our workplaces. That's why witches to rise as where we work. Because you have no testimony. We don't put Jesus at the front. That let them know I, I belong to you. Let it be known, Jesus, that I am yours. And I applied for this job. And they missed to give me. Let it be known that the believer wasn't given. I've put you in front. Hey! Are we talking? Let them know that I am a believer. Let them know. Let them see you put the Bible on your desk, Mike, and open your Bible and read your verse at lunchtime. Let them see you scroll through your Bible. Let them understand. When you got born again, I've not told you about it. I tell you about Jesus. No, I'm okay. It's okay. Doesn't mean that I'm telling you to get saved. I'm not saying stop smoking what you're smoking. I'm just letting you know about what I eat. I eat the word. Wangapi you go to a hotel, umeitisha steak, T-bone steak, ukaletewa managu. How many times? So you get angry. Don't you go to a restaurant and you have the privilege to open your menu and say, I will not have juice. I will have only beef. Don't you have that power? Then why can't you sit on your own desk and open your Bible? And someone asks, what are you doing? I'm reading the word. I'm not telling you you should read the word with me. But I'm letting you know that this is what I eat. The same way you're on a diet, I'm on a diet. I'm on a gospel diet. We are removing him from the cave. Sama Lucy, we are putting him there. That if they reject you, then let heaven record they rejected a daughter of God or a son of God. But when you hide him, they rejected someone else. And the devil likes, because the devil knows you that you're a believer. But the devil likes when you hide Jesus. Because when they do an injustice, and you come and start praying here, Jesus asks, he said, if you deny me, he said, if you deny me in public, I shall deny you in front of my father. I'm sorry. I used to preach in crusades when I was young. Nga. <laughs> he didn't say that. Alizema, if you deny me, in public, I shall deny you in front of my father. So you denied him in public. Then you came on Friday. Father, unleash the door. Unleash the door. 
And the devil said, Jesus, you said, you're not a man that you should lie. You said, you said. Now Jesus has to go and look for a bylaw. And look for a Bible and say, bylaw, that every good gift comes from God. So now let us just show mercy. Watch as a footway. Bare minimum, let's have a compromise as a footway. But the authority to unleash the devil from that place got lost by a bylaw. A technicality. Eh? Seeing. Jesus said in Matthew 6, thy kingdom come. After that he says, your will be done. Remember, I'm not saying this to confuse anyone. Just note this for your own records. That this prayer Jesus talks about in Matthew 6, remember, is a prayer before the new covenant because he hasn't died yet. What you do with that information, I leave it for you. I'm just letting you know that that prayer is prayed before the cross. Remember, the context of that prayer is to people who have not encountered resurrection. Context. But he tells them, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. How will they know the kingdom has come? They have to see it. Hallelujah. Seeing in the spirit is very powerful. There are three realms to see. There's the angelic realm. Number one. Write that down. Realms, realms to see. Angelic realm, number one. Realm number two is the demonic realm. And the realm number three is what? The heavenly realm. Realm number one is angelic. Realm number two is demonic. Realm number, realm number three is heavenly. Angelic, right? Hebrews 13, 2. Hebrews 13, 2. That is why Balaam, the Lord opens the eyes of Balaam and Balaam can see the angel. Meaning not everyone else could see the angel. Are we together? That is why many people could not see the angel. That is why Elisha tells that boy, I pray God opens your eyes that you see those who are with us are more than they them. And the boy sees what? Angels. He was open to see the angelic realm. So the angelic realm at times is important when you are doing warfare and the Lord opens your eyes and you see the angel army surrounding you. You know if you are doing warfare and you see the angelic army, how much confidence you have? Eh? You know how much confidence you have? Or when you pray and you see an angel before you and the angel of the Lord tells you, send me dispatch me. Oh, there's nothing as good as that. Let me tell you. God is good. But there's nothing as beautiful that you are praying and the angel of the Lord stands before you and he tells you, dispatch me. And you tell him, hey, God is good. You might wonder. Hallelujah. But there are battles I have fought even in this sanctuary. Where the angel of the Lord appeared and I told me, dispatch me. And I told him in the name of my father. I dispatch you. Go. Deal with this issue. Hallelujah. 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 There are times when I've been faced forcing death. I told you the time when I was praying for my wife. When the enemy was trying to steal her life. And the angel of the Lord stood with me. And the man, the angel standing next to me told me, dispatch me. Dispatch me. And I said, I unleashed the angel armies. And immediately there was a host of angels. Oh, let me tell you. There is nothing as fulfilling as that jail. Hey, ata watu wa shike simu yako. Wacha wa shike. In fact, wa shike. Haki, let them not pick up your calls. It's fine. Number two is the demonic realm. Colossians 1.13. Also, when Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. Jesus is noticing that the thing that is talking is not Peter. The thing is a spirit. He could see the demon. That is why at times when you pray for your children, if the Lord opens up your eyes, you can see the spirit. I know there's a demon here. Demons, you don't guess. You don't guess. I've done deliverance for many years. I've done deliverance here, guesswork. Where you try everything and nothing. Then the deliverance where the Holy Ghost simply shows you when I'm laying hands on her and I see in the demonic realm what is surrounding her. If there's a serpent, I see it. If there is an ox, I see it. Hallelujah. I go back to, if a donkey can see, yes. If a donkey can see, 
So at times even someone can enter and speak and talk to you. Your boss can enter and tell you something. And you look at them and step back and tap in the spirit. And you don't engage. You let it be. When the person leaves, you call the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ama kiwa pali unachapa matangs chini ya maji. Moto ya Holy Ghost. Unona natanganyikiwa. What did I come to do in your office? Let me go think. I'm serious. I told you this story at times with my children. My child, maybe angelia, angelia. And I think, I listen, I look. I look, I look. And my wife would be carrying the child, maybe, and I'm baby, and I'm turn. And I pause, and I look, and I keep, and I keep quiet. And the Holy Ghost shows me. Then I see the Spirit. Then I go for it. As a believer, if you don't see the demonic realm, you are doing blind warfare. You will find yourself binding ancestors, and that day, you should be binding your cousin. God, this is good. Unakona ancestors, mababu, mababu, na ako hapo na wewe. You might be dealing with people everywhere. You find, let me tell you a story. There's a lady who one day, her and her husband went to war. The husband would, would come home at midnight. Akinje kwa nyuma midnight. Do you know what he says? Wakes up the wife and tells the wife, go take a chicken. Slaughter it. Cook it. I want to eat chicken now. Midnight. The wife goes. Najama is angry. He's ready to fight. She removes chicken at midnight. Slaughters the chicken. This story tells you this story involves lawyers. Slaughters the chicken at night. And a pika. And they were fighting over everything and nothing. One time she told the Lord, Father, open my eyes. Let me see where the demon is. And one day, she just came. How you know you were woken up? She just woke up. Akakuja kwa jikoni. Entered the kitchen. And found the house help putting things in the tea. The house help did not see her. Akamaliza kweka put back her stash. Twice of it on yone. Ninini? Uchawi. The conflict she was having with the husband was born from witchcraft. And some of us, even I'm not saying that nannies are bad, but some of us, the nannies in our house are the cause of problems in our marriages. They are the cause. When she was making breakfast, because she knows breakfast, no one supervises. Akaeka na akaficha. Where you came in the morning, took three cups of tea. It's the best tea ever. He chai me pick of Zuri. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, I'm serious. I'm saying this. I, I'm saying this in my own house. I said this. I told my wife and we agreed. We agreed that even when the children come with their report forms, the exams they have done, they keep them until they give us. You, the child can come and I can lepale. Na huyo angalia ona mtutoka amelima e. Achukue yu kitu. Sorry Mike, sorry. Secrets are coming out. Oh, secrets. Mike, is jauna kitu. I've not seen anything. Hallelujah. Hey. I pray next time nifanyabu ni checks. Checks yanke chini. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't mind. Hide them. They come, they give us. Let them give us. They should not. They'd rather keep them in their bags until we see them. They come, they put there their A's. They put there their A's. They put there their A's. Before I know the papers have been, have been released. I don't know. But they were given papers. So I didn't see. What if she takes them? At night. I end at the madawa. I say, I'm to go punda. Suddenly you find. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Yes. My younger brother, our last born, is called Job. Job is a brilliant mind. Job is intelligent. All through from when he was in primary world, Job is brilliant. If he talks, he's a brilliant fellow. When Job was in form three, they went 
put their bags somewhere, went to the town before they take their bags and come back to Nairobi. His bag was stolen. Out of all the school bags, his bag was stolen. Next term, Alipata E. And the sad thing, Alipata E kwa CRE. Do you know my father could not do it? My father looked and my father wanted to kill him. My mom said, stop. Something is wrong. Mom told my father, before you touch him, we have to pray about it. Something is wrong. And my brother never said his bag was stolen because he was afraid. It's my mom who told him, where is your bag? Where are your books? I am seeing your books somewhere being put. Where are your books? The whole holiday, the entire holiday. Seeing in the demonic realm. Are we talking? You never seen this in the demonic realm. That you can understand this attack. And I'm going to attack the spirit. I'm not dealing with the, with the person. But at times we let it be. I'm just saying in our houses. You fight with your husband every day, with your wife every day. You find you have lost interest in your own house. You wonder what it is. still going to pick one. Hallelujah. Please must put a watu on my account. I'm just saying. It is good to note. Don't be naive. Hallelujah. Then of course the heavenly realm, Colossians 3, 2. The heavenly realm, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. So you must remember two things. Number one, your legal position and number two, your physical position. Your legal position is with Christ in the heavenly places. Your physical position is where you are right now. The devil manipulates your physical position to attack your legal position. Your legal position is with Christ in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. We need to pray tonight. For the Lord to open our spiritual eyes. Amen. Tomorrow, before I jump into the sermon for tomorrow, I will begin, I will connect how to see in the spirit with also how to overcome fear. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. Because they are tied. We need to be very keen to see in the spirit. To see these three realms. And to reject the lie and the deception the enemy gives us. I said there are three principalities. Oppression, deception, and rejection. Deception is the demon we are dealing with this weekend. That principality. The lie that the enemy gives every time. Give me Deuteronomy 1. It says... It is only 11 days journey from Horeb, Mount Sinai, by way of Mount Seir, to Kadesh Barnea on Canaan's border. Yet Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before crossing the border and entering Canaan, the, 40, um, uh, the promised land. It was an 11 day journey that took them how long? 40 years. Was it God's plan for them to go for 40 years? God's plan was 11 days. And some people right now, you have already reached the 11 days of your breakthrough. The 11 days have passed. But still the enemy has convinced you that you are not yet there because you are unable to see what God is seeing. You are not seeing the Lord having answered that prayer. You cannot bring it to pass in your own spirit. Remember, what we speak is born from what we, what we believe as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are our private meditations? Do we see the things of God? Do we see the miracles of God? I ask God this question. 11 days, was it your plan for them to have a complicated journey? The Lord said, no, it was straightforward. It was straightforward. On the 11th day, they enter. I finish with Jericho. I finish with everywhere. But now, I had to work with them because of how they are. I asked the Lord a question. Do I put you in a place, Father, where you need to work with my level of belief? Amen. That is why today, those of you came for prayers early. The first thing we are praying for those, Lord, help my unbelief. 
Help my eyes to see myself in the things you've promised me. May I see what you see. May I see where you see me. And may I see how you see me. Can I repeat? Can I see, Lord, what you see? Can I see where you see me? And can I see how you see me? The biggest fertilizer of doubt is when I choose to see where I am and I fail to see what God sees. I was telling someone this week that with God you require one yes for your life to change. And the biggest fight of the human being is the first yes. But am I where God wants me to be? Am I, it's not about where I am and where I want to be. It's am I where God wants me to be? Am I saying yes to the 11 day plan? Or my no is giving me 40 years? And some people the devil has made us believe that our no is buying us time. That our no is faith. Yet the no is the deception. What is the no? The no is the things you have heard over time. Yeah. The things you've heard over time. Tomorrow I'll talk about what gives birth to fear. And one of the greatest strongholds of fear, you only warfare case, so don't miss. That there is fear that is in the DNA. That is the strongest fear in the DNA. Yani after Jane Utake, you'll still be afraid. After after pep talk, you'll still be afraid. Equal DNA. Kesho, in the name of Jesus, it goes. Amen. It must go. Because this creates the deception the enemy uses for, for many years. So what do I do? I begin to question what God wants to do. So God has told me, Victor, it's a simple process. Just go there, stand, do this. I start telling God, but God, you know, pa, pa, pa. In the Fioris, 40 years, I spent 40 years on an 11 day journey. They would have just said one thing. If his power was enough to take us out of Egypt, then his power can give us the land of milk and honey. If his power, Mike, could take you out of the bondage of the enemy, then his power can fulfill the destiny for your life. Where do you and God fight? What has the enemy lied to you? I told my team last night that there are some processes that are demonic. Lucifer creates processes that are false. And you find that Gabi was to move from here to here but the devil creates false processes. And the people who are bound the most are the people who are most intelligent. Good morning. The most, because they are the ones who overthink on a move of God. And the devil loves intelligent people because intelligent people have logic. Hey. They have logic. You know, if I, then I would. It makes so much sense. And the devil says, you are right. And the Lord says, give me 40. Hallelujah. When I used to do athletics, my coach, Salamba, you are late. Give me 30. Push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six. No coach. Give me 20. One, two, three. I'll tell my father. That's how it always ended. <laughs> then he'd leave me alone. Tell my father. But I'm saying this. Logic. Logic. Because logic stops Mombi from seeing. God gave her an instruction, but logic stops me from seeing because logic makes me look at my circumstance. Logic makes me look at my, side, at my situations. Logic makes me to accommodate others in the instruction God has given me. When God has given you an instruction, others are not in the equation. Your obedience is the first thing. Others will follow because those who are for your destiny will align to your yes. But we are trying to align everyone to our yes. But you know, if I jump like this, they will hate me. And God says, even in their loving you, what have they given you? 
Unasukuma imani. Haleluya. Jaki sasa. Ongo sawa. Oh. Nimezoea kuona mbele sana shanga. Are we together, Alex? If the people who are learned are difficult. Because learned people are the ones who use most logic. And you know how to approach this. At times we call it wisdom. Yet it is fear manifesting through the back door. Fear of opinion. What will they think of me? What will they say? If I walk away, what I say nini? So we say we shall apply wisdom. I see wisdom. Good morning. Isaiah says, give me Isaiah. I love this scripture. The Lord says this. Copy Isaiah. Good. Give me two. Verse two. Verse two. Verse two first. Isaiah. We are praying with Isaiah, my friend. I will go before you and make crooked places straight. Why does God say this? It is because your life is an 11 day journey and the enemy has made it a 40 day journey. So God says, I will go before you tonight in the name of Jesus to make every crooked place straight in the name of Jesus. Tonight we are believing God that these meandering complexities we have, I was telling my team last night, tonight I want us to make a bold prayer. The Lord my things come out of the patterns of complications. If Lord you say deliverance is coming to my home, then it comes. These crooked places I don't want. Hallelujah. If my life is an 11 day journey, then Lord I'm ready for 11 days. I'm ready for 11 days. I asked God a question. Why was it an 11 day journey? He told me it will take them 11 days to get over and cross. And on the 12th day, they'll get down the 11th day at night. On the 12th day, they possess the land. And God told me 12 is the number of sovereignty. 12 is the number of kingdom. They were going to step in the number of kingdom. Today, for some of us, I pray in the name of Jesus. May you enter your 12th day today. Hallelujah. God is good. You only see when you draw near to God. You only see when you spend time with God. The Lord says something in Isaiah 45 3. Give me Isaiah 45 3 now. This is a biblical secret. I know you know it. I will give you the treasures of darkness, comma, Munana comma, and hidden riches of secret places. The Lord told me. That there is my presence and there is a secret place in my presence. Eh? These treasures are hidden. Give me Psalm 31. He sing your watch. Psalms 31. Give me. It says, How great is your goodness, which you laid up for them that fear you. Hallelujah. You've penalty. He made, a, he made offside. Your goodness is so great. You have stored up great blessings for those who honor you. You have done so much for those who come to you for protection. Blessing them before the watching world. Give me verse 20. You hide them in the shelter of your presence. Save from those who conspire from them. You shelter them in your presence. Far from what? Far from what? Far from what? Give me the same text in the Bible that I don't like. <laughs> Nearly inspired version. Okay, you. Wale wana wanafungua sa yeye happy. On NIV in case of Jui. Ani wana mo nyagunyo mungina Jui yes. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you? that you bestow in the sight of all those who take refuge in you. Verse 20. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing what? Accusing tongues. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I want us to pray and I want us to believe the Lord effectively, not guessingly, effectively. Jana, if you remember those who are here tonight, I asked you a question. Amen. 
I asked you a question. And I asked you this. If you are a child of God, do you pray as a co-heir or do you pray like an outsider? Do you pray like a co or, 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 or an outsider? Eh? A co -heir. Hallelujah. Give me two scriptures we pray. I wanted to, ab to abandon them, but the Lord has told me I need to. Give me this in King James, verse 20, King James. It says, you shall hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. You shall hide them in the secret of your presence. In the presence of God is a secret place. Give me Ephesians and we pray with Ephesians. Tonight I want us to pray as co heirs with Christ. I want us to pray as co heirs with Christ. He says, he has raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you are a co heir with Christ, how would Jesus pray for his miracles? How would Jesus pray for his breakthrough? How would Jesus pray for that door to open? How would Jesus pray? How would Jesus pray? Do we pray as Jesus would pray? Tonight in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray the way Christ would pray. I want you to pray as a co heir with Christ. Today we are refusing the lie. Faith is now. And you're telling God, give us the belief. Faith is now. Jesus never saw anything complicated. Everything of his was simple and direct. Nothing of his was complicated. Today in the name of Jesus, we uproot the demon of deception that comes to confuse us and take us on wild goose chases that don't make sense. We are fighting battles we should not fight, dealing with enemies we should not be dealing with. We are focusing on things that don't require our attention. The devil has kept us busy on things that don't make sense instead of keeping us busy in the things of God. Tonight we arrest the principality of deception, but we may see in the spirit, but we may pray for our things in the confidence that Jesus lives and Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray the way Jesus would pray. Jesus will not pray second guessing. Jesus prayed knowing that the Lord answers. He would pray knowing that the Lord delivers and the Lord fulfills. Let us stand. Rabashanda. Karakarabush. Kadalebralishka. Rifralana mashande barikadaba. Hori barabas kelebar dish kadaba. Hori kamara lujanama. Hori erebo shanda rana erebo. Karama rabashande rani kanama rabosh kadeleba. Just begin to lift the Lord up. Just begin to lift the Lord up. Just begin to lift the Lord up and then you just begin to lift him up. But the Lord gives you authority. The Lord gives you power. Start up the Holy Ghost within you. Start up the Holy Ghost within you. We are telling the Father tonight, I want you to open my eyes. I want to see. Father, I have received a word from you. But I want to see in the Spirit. I want to see in the Spirit. I want to see in the spirit. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see these realms and dimensions. Father, open up my eyes tonight. The Lord, the word you've given me, I may see it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, he was able to do above and beyond what you have thought of or even imagined. Every imagination has a view. Every imagination can be seen. Every imagination is tangible. I pray by the power that rose Christ from the dead that the Lord unlocks you to Tonight, in the name of Jesus, tell the Father tonight, unlock me, Lord, unlock my mind, unlock my spirit. I want to see in the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus, if a donkey could see, how much more does a child of the Most High God, if a donkey could see, how much more the Son of, a, of the Most High God, how much more the daughter of God. Ramashanda, Rokodish Kebralishka, Ranala Kranamara Luz, Cabrilina, Radish Kadileka, the Bari Keleba, just praying the Holy Ghost right now. I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, Riba Shandaba. 
Kuru robra kaleli kani bari kralima. Tada busanda raba. Ngori ba 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 ba. Holy Ghost, open our eyes tonight. Ngori ba shanda ba. Open our eyes tonight. Lord, if a donkey could see, how much more? How much more? How much more? Hari kapari rima. How much more? How much more? Raba shanda bariba. I don't want to walk blind anymore. I want to see. I want to see in the spirit. I want to see in the spirit. I want to see in the spirit. I want to walk with understanding. I want to walk with understanding. I want to walk with understanding. In the name of Jesus. Father, unlock my eyes. Unlock my vision. Unlock my vision that I may see in the Holy Ghost. That I may see in the Spirit. May I see what you see. May I see how you see. May I see where you see me. Oh, riba shanda riba rama. Koro brash kadi kana nema. Roko diska bralo dariska bralo. Rakralo kralis brilika. Oh, rida ba riba baba. Oh, rika warobo shandele. Oh, riba baba baba. Refuse to be bound. Refuse to be bound. Refuse to conform. Refuse to settle. Oh, riba shanda raba. You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Take your legal position. You are seated with Jesus Christ in the heavenly places. Take your legal position right now in the name of Jesus. Take your legal position. Take your legal position in the name of Jesus. Take your legal position. You are with Christ in the heavenly places. Your view must be a view from above and a view from not below. See from above. Tell the Lord. Go riba shandaraba. Kuropari karaburakaba. Ranama shandababa. Father, if Balaam was able to see and Balaam offered sacrifices of bulls, oh God, if Balaam was able to see and Balaam offered rams, oh God, how much more can I see and the sacrifice of my life is a sacrifice.